Hi everyone, welcome back to Faces and Screens. I'm Erin and today I'm going to be reviewing Since You've Been On by Morgan Matson. This book is one of my favourite contemporaries. Um, I read it for the first time last year and I think it's a great summer read. It's light, it's fun, it's um, got a bit of romance, it's got a bit of friendship and it's just such a cute fluffy read and I would highly recommend it to anyone that likes contemporaries or if you're looking for a book to read on holidays this is a great one to take with you. Essentially this book follows Emily, the main protagonist, as she embarks on the summer before senior year of high school and she had this summer all planned out with her best friend Sloan. They had loads of things planned they were going to do together and um, they, they basically had it all figured out until one day um, Sloane goes missing without a trace and Emily has no clue where she's gone. Um, she tries texting Sloane and calling Sloane and she gets no reply, she gets no answers until she arrives home to find an envelope from Sloane that contains a list of 13 things for Emily to do. Now the list contains some pretty daunting tasks for Emily and things that would be a little bit out of her comfort zone like she has to skinny dip, um, she has to kiss a stranger, Basically, she is challenged to do things that she wouldn't normally do. And this list um, ends up shaping Emily's summer and leads to new experiences that she would never have done had she not had this list. And she kind of completes the list in the hopes that she'll be able to find Sloane at the end of it. Um, and it's just such a good book. Um, I was so hooked by that synopsis um, before I read this book and that's the whole reason I picked it up. I just thought it was just such a cool concept. The narrative of this book is obviously shaped by the list that Sloane leaves for Emily and it takes so many unexpected turns and twists and it's just so well written and the characters in this book are so um, realistic and true to life and that's why I really liked it. I could relate to Emily the main character so much in this book. Honestly, Morgan Matson is now one of my favourite contemporary authors. She is just so talented and I really enjoy her work. I gave five out of five stars to this book. It is one of my favourite contemporaries um, next to Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. Both these books are just so close to my heart and are contemporaries that I think I'll always enjoy because I can relate to the characters in them so much and the stories are just so fun. Um, so that's pretty much all I have to say for the non-spoilery section. So if you haven't read this book yet, turn this video off now and go pick it up because it is so good um, and I'm going to be jumping into the discussion part of this video now. So obviously this book has huge emphasis on friendship, particularly Emily and Sloane's, but that wasn't the only friendship I really enjoyed in this book. I love the friendship between um, Collins and Frank. I thought they were so cute together. It was one of those romances that was just so fun and hilarious to read about. I loved their banter, the whole Beatles joke as well. Oh, it just, I, Collins was honestly one of my favourite characters. I just love him so much. And then also there's Emily and Dawn. It was just so nice seeing Emily kind of step out of her comfort zone when she befriended Dawn. Like, um, it's kind of obvious that had, she, had Sloane been around for this summer, Emily and Dawn would never have met. They would never have been friends. And I really enjoy how they met when Dawn comes in, you know, crying about um, her boyfriend and her best friend getting together. And then they go and deliver pizzas together. Oh, it was just... It was so cute. I loved the outcome of Emily and Sloane's friendship. I think um, Morgan Matson set up Emily and Sloane's friendship to be very one-sided. Um, it, it seemed like Emily was the one making the effort in the friendship and Sloane was kind of this popular girl who kind of had Emily under her wing a little bit and was maybe a little bit controlling of Emily but then that totally flips on its head when Emily finds the um, disposable camera that Sloane had. I love how this book isn't just about the summer, how we got to see little um, sections um, revealing how Emily and Sloane became friends. I love their initial meeting. It was just so lovely that we got an insight into their friendship and how um, their relationship developed. And then obviously the whole thing comes full circle when Emily goes to find Sloane at the end of the book. And Sloane is just like so shocked at what Emily's done over the summer and how she, you know, she's arrived with Frank Potter and all this. Friendship's something that's often overlooked in contemporary because romance kind of takes centre stage. But this book kind of balances romance um, with friendship and it's just a really nice blend of the two. And that's why I really enjoyed this book quite a lot. Obviously, Emily as a character goes on a crazy journey in this book. I adore how the book does come full circle, as Emily does say at one point. Seeing the development in Emily's character, and the development in um, particular moments in the book, like particularly with the orchard, I think that's quite symbolic for the book, how 
Emily starts off at the orchard alone, you know, when it's Frank's birthday and they're all there together. She's there with friends that she's made over the summer. She's feeling a lot more confident and a lot more self-assured and I really enjoyed reading about that. I love seeing characters going from being quite shy and socially awkward to really coming into themselves and gaining a lot of self-confidence. It's one of the most satisfying and rewarding things to read about and that's exactly what this book does. The list itself in this book leads to so many fun and hilarious moments. I This is one of those books that just had me laughing so much because obviously the characters bring quite a lot of humour, especially Collins and Frank, and the dynamic between those two always made seem to make me laugh. The challenges that Sloan sets for Emily are just so funny and it, she gets herself into a lot of situations that obviously most people would not get themselves into on a regular basis. Like the whole kissing the stranger chapter, oh my god. It's just so awkward and funny and I just love how awkward Emily is in that moment. I just found it hilarious to read about and how everyone was waiting outside the door. I just love the skinny dipping chapter. I thought it just had me laughing out loud like so much. And when Colin steals the clothes of everyone, it's just classic Collins. I just love, I love Colin so much. If you couldn't tell, he's just amazing. I love when um, Don and Collins go on a date and they get together because they are so cute together and Dawn is like such a sweetheart and Colin acts very confident but you can tell that he's quite insecure inside and I just find it adorable that they got together. It just really warmed my soul. So I'm a bit of a sucker for romance and this book is no exception. I loved Frank and Emily's story so much. I love romances that begin as friendships which is definitely what Emily and Frank's uh, relationship started off as. I adore the scenes when these two um, go jogging together and like the playlist that they share and how Frank listens to that comedian and they have the joke about, you know, a, in a well-ordered universe. Oh, they're just so cute and like... <sighs> the living room theatre scene is probably one of my favourites in this book. I loved it so much. Um, I just found it absolutely hilarious um, how Frank and Emily kind of just got sucked into this situation so quickly. And it also has a reference to Amy and Roger's Epic Detour, which is another book by Morgan Matson, which I'd highly recommend reading because that's another really great book. And that was just really funny to read about. I love how Morgan Matson books kind of um, take place in like a same, the same universe and how she ties all of them together. Emily and Frank's romance is quite a slow burning one, which I love. I love slow burn romances, they are my favourites because um, the payoff is so good when the two characters finally get together. Oh, another one of my favourite scenes was the um, wedding chapter when Emily and Frank dance till dawn. I just love that so much and I love how Emily becomes brave enough to start taking more risks and stepping out of her comfort zone so much that you know, she suggests to get crash a wedding. She suggests that they go skinny dipping, all that kind of stuff. It just really exemplifies how much Emily grows over the course of this book. And I just love it so much. I love character development. I'm such a sucker for it. And this book does it so well. I loved reading about Emily and Beckett's um, brother-sister relationship as well. That was really sweet. I loved how she went camping with him because her, um, the dad blew off Beckett because the dad and the mum were writing the play. I thought that was so sweet. The books are just so fun to read and I think would work really well if it was adapted to a film or even a TV series actually because you could do it in instalments. I just really enjoy this contemporary. Morgan Matson is such a good writer and I, to be honest I'll probably read anything that she writes because I've read quite a few of her books now and really really enjoyed them. I'm planning on reading uh, the Unexpected Everything really soon, which I'm really excited for, and I might do a review of that when I read it. So that's everything I have to say on Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay tuned for more videos soon, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!